Hola, Peros. So I see your question in my box. Uh, obviously, I answered it back with an email, but I also wanted to sort of explain why they got that answer or why that makes any sense. So from here, I've got the x equals, uh, this is what's referred to, it's an infinite radical, but it's also referred to as a nested radical. The idea that, so like Russian dolls, you've got the one, and it goes in, and it goes in, and it goes in. You know, like the little ones keep getting smaller and smaller as they go inside. That kind of thing. But what I know for sure, just based on from the first look, is that if I just wanted to replace all this with x, I could totally make this x is equal to x. That's available to be done, which matters here in just a second. Now, in order to figure out a value for x, and when I try to find out this kind of value, um, I'm looking to find a solution, which is to say if I were to graph it, like if it was x plus 4 equals 0, I would want to know sort of where it crosses the x-axis. So in this case, it might be negative 4. That's what I'm looking for in the, in the setup. That's kind of the reason why it works, that, or the reason why we try to find that sort of thing. But I can't do that from here. So what I'm going to do is actually square it on both sides. What this allows me to do is a little bit, in a way, of uh, trickery. I'm going to try to make this small enough to where I can erase it. Now that I've... Well, it helps if you write the square there, dummy. Um, now that I'm getting to the point that I've squared it, this square root of it goes away. So, because I'd be multiplying the nested square root of 1 plus things all the way down times itself. So, the top square root would go away. What I'm left with in that case is 1 plus this nonsense that continues on and on and on forever. But I already said earlier that that nonsense, I could just say it was x instead, so that's what they're doing. They're using a little bit of mathemat you know, a little bit of substitution. It's trickery in a way. Now I can get it into something that I can work. So I need to draw a line here, subtract x from both sides. Those cancel. Obviously, I can't combine those. Bring down to 1, subtract 1. You end up with the equation that they talk about in the question, I think. Now, the problem is I would love it. Or that's not the problem. The reality is I would love it if I could just do x minus 1 and x plus 1. The problem is, uh, and then just you know factor it normally, because those are the only factors of 1 anyway, and this tells me that they're different signs. The problem is this will actually cancel out the x term, so there won't be 1. So this doesn't help me in any way. Which means I'm going into an answer of factors that are not integers or numbers. They're, you know, partial answers. So instead of doing it that way, my only real hope is to do the quadratic equation. Because, I mean, in the end of all things, you can use the quadratic equation to do uh, an equation factoring whenever you want, really. Or, sorry, a quadratic factoring. Anything with x squared, you can factor it. So I will do negative b plus or minus b squared that's the square root of b squared, minus 4ac over 2a. And under here, I'm going to mark the 1 is the number, is the coefficient on x squared, the number in front, so it's just 1. b would be negative 1, and c would also be negative 1. Now I'm just going to plug some stuff in. Negative 1 times, or you know, negative, negative 1 is positive 1. So that's where that 1 comes from right there. Plus or minus b squared would be negative 1 squared minus 4, 1, negative 1, over 2 times 1. Now inside of here, I'm dealing with the idea of, I'm going to sort of draw it up here just a little bit, negative 1 squared minus 4, 1 times negative 1. This becomes positive 1 minus 4 times 1. 1 times negative 1, or 1 minus negative 4, which is 5. So I end up with 1 plus or minus the square root of 5 over 2. And that's where they come from. Now the reality is, this says that x is equal to this, which means that something, you know, if I were to plug in or whatnot and get an answer, it would have to work. The original form doesn't have x squared in it. It just has x. And in order for a nested, an infinite nested uh, radical to work, your answer eventually has to be positive. You can't have, 
Like if this were four plus, I mean, it would be four, that kind of thing. But you can't do that with a negative number. It's not possible. Whereas x squared, if I were to do the one plus or minus square root of five, which is like, I think it's around 2.3, something like that, over two. If I do the positive, you know, it works out fine. It's like 3.3 something over two. But if I do the minus, rut row, I get a negative number, which is fine when you have x squared, because I can just multiply a negative times a negative, and it gives me a positive. But in the original equation, which is right here, it's a single x. And you can't have it, so it's negative, because the nested doesn't go under, doesn't become negative because of all the square roots. You can't have negatives under the square root, is where I'm really trying to go with it, if it's to be a real number answer. You could get an imaginary number that way, like an i or something, but they're looking for real solutions to the equation. So the reason that you cannot have the negative version of this equation punched back into the original equation Whereas you could use the positive version, that's fine. You can't use the other one, is because all the square roots, it would be indicative of the idea that I have a negative under a square root, which would lead to an imaginary. Hopefully that's helpful. It may not be at all. If it's not, I can totally try again. So just, you know, give me a chance or if you need anything else.